Good afternoon and welcome to um, the members of the press. I'm here with the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission. I'm happy that you are able to join us. Um, with me this afternoon is our chairperson, Commissioner M.C. Rothhorn, our vice chairperson, Commissioner Dustin Witches, our legal liaison, Commissioner Stephen Lett, and our executive director, Sue Ann Hammersmith. Um, this is more of an open forum, so we can take any questions that you have regarding the agenda items and um, make sure we get your questions answered so that you can share this information um, with the public. If there's any questions, just raise your hand um, and then we will address them um, at this time. I see an iPhone, not sure who that is, but we wanted to uh, address who you are. Hey, it's uh, Claire Hendrickson from the Detroit Free Press. Thanks for having this. So at the last commission meeting, um, I believe it was Commissioner Zatella asked to add an item about making fulfilled, like FOIA requests that had been filled public and, and on the website. That did not come up for discussion today. Wondering why it wasn't on the agenda. Sure, Ms. Hammersmith. Uh, yes, we would uh, we would want to have legal review before we put that on the agenda as to the options for this commission. Um, our legal team has been very busy at this time. So as you know, they are in active litigation. They've been looking at policies and procedures and contracts. Um, so um, it's just something that they haven't gotten to yet. Any follow-up, Ms. Henderson? Sure. Um, just wondering if there's a timeline for the legal team to weigh in on that question. Um, I would hope there might be a possibility of the next meeting in April. If not, it would be the second meeting in April. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Jonathan. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry. I was on another Zoom, so I didn't see the actual meeting, but um, can somebody walk me through what happened with the pay issue and um, why um, you reconsidered that? Commissioner Lett. Well, Jonathan, we uh, had been obviously talking about it. This would be the third time. And I believe uh, the commissioners, <clears throat> based upon uh, what the comments had been, and after having it gives, given some further consideration, uh, decided to take another look at it and uh, went back to our original uh, pay scale, uh, thus eliminating the 7%. Um, I mean, what, were you responding to public criticism or what, what was the impetus for reversing that decision? Well, certainly the, uh, there have been a number of public comments that weren't very complimentary about what we did. Uh, we took those into consideration and I think all the commissioners uh, gave it a second thought and, and uh, given where we're at and what we're doing, we decided it wasn't a wise decision to have gone up 7%, so we reversed it. Gotcha, and just for clarification then, so it's back to 35% of the governor's salary? That's, That's what it, correct. it That's ended correct. up. Do you know what, how much, what is that in the actual dollar figure? I don't know. It's a little bit over $55,000. Is it 55, I'm not sure if it's 55, 375, but I just know it's a little bit over $55,000. Okay, I'll get out my calculator. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But, you know, once again, you know, Commissioner Lett says, you know, our commission has been very open and transparent in its deliberations um, as it relates to this. Um, and they do listen to public feedback. You know, they do listen to public concern. And um, I just think it's a testimony. Obviously, it was a hard decision. It's been going on for a few weeks. But, um, you know, the commission, you know, took its time and deliberated. And it did that. So it really speaks to, well, like I say, the greatest civic lesson in the world is the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission, because it's truly government for the people, by the people. And they actually listen, and you can trace um, how they listen through their decisions. So I just think that just really is a, you know, commendable of this commission and its continued work. So public feedback works, and uh, we uh, continue to solicit it. And even that, you've got two minutes now, Jonathan, instead of one. So that's another thing. So thank you. Any other questions? Um, Jonathan, do you have another, your hand up again or no? Okay, Colin. Hey, so I was just wondering, um, 
and I apologize if this has already been answered, but is there an update in terms of the budget situation asking more money from the legislature? I know last time there was a letter that was going to go out or a letter that uh, the commission was working on. Um, where does that stand right now? Um, Ms. Hammersmith? Um, I was waiting for the budget to be settled by the commissioners and it was still seemed to be in a state of flux. So we've got the budget nailed down as of this meeting and uh, those letters will go out to the uh, appropriations chair, um, chairs. So um, yeah, very quickly, very quickly because we do owe a fiscal year 21 report by the end of March. So everything will go in one, cons uh, one concise package to the appropriation committee chairs. I know a concern was just the amount of money the commission had left to make it to the end of the fiscal year. Um, at this current point, uh, given that the commission did vote to lower the salary back down, about how many months left would you say the commission has before it really reaches uh, larger financial troubles? Um, I would say that, um, first of all, we, we have a budget through February. Um, we know what bills we've paid through February. But we do have a lot of, of large outstanding bills, especially in the area of legal counsel. So um, we're waiting for those bills to come for actually February. Um, we are catching up with our mappers. They had not billed us since um, October 1st. So we've got the um, those bills caught up. Um, and you know, I, my best guess is this current budget will take the commission through possibly April, and then um, that they would be in a, a shortfall area, maybe maybe into May, but um, they certainly wouldn't make it through the end of the fiscal year. Uh, I don't believe with the litigation at hand and the expenses that have been incurred, again, due to litigation, um, if you look at budget year to year, there is virtually no difference. Um, some areas have gone down significantly. Um, so really the only expense that makes this budget have a shortfall would be the litigation and defending the maps, which is active at this point in time. Is there a backup plan for if that were to happen, um, if the appropriations chairs don't respond in time? Um, I know the commission, the constitutional amendment uh, mentions that the state would have to indemnify commissioners uh, for money the legislature doesn't provide them. But what is the commission's plan if by April litigation is still very active and the shortfall, as you say, is in effect? Well, I won't be the executive director then, so I could punt, but I will answer that. Um, you know, the commission will not be able to pay its bills. I mean, they will get to a point, if not appropriated additional funds, that they would not be able to pay their bills. So all the invoicing would be put on hold um, until there were additional funds appropriated to um, take care of the work of the commission. Um, Colin, I think it's really important to note that this commission has been fiscal hawks. As you know, we saved significant money on our public hearings last year with regards to our public hearings costs um, through tough negotiations. Um, the commission continues to save money. As you notice um, this year in terms of staffing costs, we've also reduced our promotional budget. And so there's always an eye on the commission to continue to reduce costs and be fiscally responsible. But um, you know the one unknown thing, and that's why the constitution was there, was litigation costs. And as our executive director, shared so clearly, those are the unknown costs that we have. We still have two pending suits out. And as she shared earlier, we have litigation for February as well as for March. Um, these are the unknowns as it relates to that, but the commission, it's you know well-documented and it's gonna be on the agenda in April. Um, we discussed at this meeting about requesting an audit from the officer of um, Audit General with regards to the funds that the commission has spent. So. There's going to be discussion on that at the next meeting, but the commission has been fiscally responsible and have really, really looked at that budget um, in terms of being engaged and involved in the meeting. The record speaks for itself. Any other questions? Um, Jonathan. 
Um, yeah, beyond, um, uh, well, I understand from Claire's tweets that you're expecting a final report on the maps April 14, but beyond that, is litigation really the only foreseeable um, work that the commission has? And um, just a related detail on the, the pay level, what happens to your pay if the commission does decide to disband? Uh, does that pay stop then? Well, it would stop within 30 days of notification. Um, obviously, if at the meeting, um, there's going to be bills have to be paid. You know, we can't just stop paying our bills, but there'll be a 30 day notice and then that would re resolve itself. Um, as we said earlier, there, there's a legal opinion in terms of how that has to work and how that process works. But um, where no one's trying to be here in perpetuity and no one's trying to waste taxpayers money, but we are trying to be responsible to the Constitution with regards to that. But be rest assured, work will be done. Um, no freeloads uh, in terms of going on, but we just want to make sure we handle our constitutional responsibilities and do that um, in a way that's respect, respectable and responsive. Um, we take, I mean, if you look at the commissioners, they take taxpayers' money very seriously. I mean, they return $20.19 from an inaugural budget the first round around. I mean, there's not a lot of fat. I mean, there's, you know, bidding that's going on, processing working with contractors to get the best rate, I mean, for everything. So, I mean, just take a look. I mean, the record really speaks for itself and the commission should be commended. But, um, you know, we want to we want to be done. Don't 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 mistake it, but we want to be done correctly. Thanks. Anyone else with any questions? All right, on behalf of the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission, um, you know, so this is Sue's last meeting. And so Commissioner Rothhorn is here as our chair, Commissioner Witches is our vice chair, and um, they can speak to um, um, Sue's um, inaugural historical efforts as our executive director. We definitely wanna provide them with that opportunity. I think Brittany said it very well, that that kindness and that that attention to detail as, as commissioners, right? That you understood that we all didn't know what we were doing. And then as a, you know, the inaugural executive director, you took us uh, through that. Like you helped us stay human and, and be human. And I think Brittany said it very well. Um, it was just, um, yeah, a lot of love and, it, and a lot of caring and attention. So thank you very, yeah. It's, um, yeah, I feel like a, a citizen who's been able to do my work with my fellow commissioners because of that, that kindness. Commissioner Witches and Commissioner Lett. After you, Steve. Well, I've, I've talked with uh, Sue uh, privately as well as uh, in writing. Uh, she knows that uh, I think that she's done uh, a wonderful job. I think my comment was uh, you had no idea what you were getting yourself into when you took this job. Uh, and uh, had you known, you probably wouldn't have applied. But uh, she's done very well herding cats, and we've made it through. Thank you for all your efforts, and uh, good luck in your future endeavors. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on for hours um, expressing my gratitude for uh, Director Hammersmith. Um, I always considered her to be quite grandmotherly to a family of 13 people that just got together one, one day out of the blue by a random selection. Um, she was basically the glue that held a lot of us together. Uh, well, I, I, I can go on and on and on, uh, and she'll be dearly missed, uh, especially by me. Um, but I uh, truly believe that she was the best person for this position. and. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, so I'll be sorry to see her go, but I do also wish her the best in all of her future endeavors as well as Commissioner Lett stated. Thank you so much, Sue. Any parting shots as we close out? Um, I appreciate the kind words and the opportunity to be part of this historic initiative. And I thank these commissioners for the great work that they did. And yes, sometimes it was like herding cats and being a mom to 13, but together we all made it through and, and produced fair maps for the people of the state of Michigan. So I applaud the efforts of the commission and 
I'm so appreciative that I had an opportunity to be a small part of their work. And um, the commission will be in great hands when um, Edward Woods III takes the reins on April 1st. So um, thanks again for um, this opportunity. And, and uh, I just appreciate it, even as a citizen of the state of Michigan, the work of this commission that has truly been historic and, and resulted in fair maps for the people of our great state of Michigan. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Our next press forum will take place after our meeting on April 14th. Um, please stay tuned for a notice with regards to that. Once again, thank you again to our executive director, Sue Hammersmith and her service, as well as to our commissioners, MC Rothhorn, our chairperson, commissioner MC, I'm sorry, commissioner Dustin Witches, our vice chairperson and commissioner Stephen T. Lett, our legal liaison to the commission. Once again, thank you so much and have a great evening. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks all.